Hello everyone, back to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather next week to 10 days. Well, today's second video is taken around the 24th of uh, July. So, we're heading towards the final stages of the month, actually, now with week to 10 day updates. Um, just released a weekend forecast, and uh, that's taking us to next weekend. Um, looks like I'm going to be taking things more showery over the coming few days. Not necessarily breaking down the heat wave. I'm going to say pretty warm. Temperatures will lower from the high level that they're going to be this weekend. They will lower a bit um but uh, as we get through to uh, next week it does look as though uh it gets say quite warm particularly so in the southeast and we may have more showers maybe in some longer spells of rain and possibly even some uh, thunderstorms as well so check out we get forecasts and see what you think about that um as i say this is going to extend out beyond uh, sort of the uh, week head time scale before we get on with that, though, just to uh, say a big thank you to the latest patron for uh, Gazovids. So we are now up to 21 patrons uh, for Gazovids, and our latest patron is um, Forums for Airports. So Forums for Airports has become uh, Gazovids' 21st uh, patron, and a big thank you to um, the Forums for Airports community. This is the uh, website that is Forums for Airports, so uh, you can discuss your local airport here on this forum, uh, and uh, do have a look at that. I'll leave a description, a link in the description box at uh, YouTube, so check out Forums for Airports if you would like to do that, and a big thank you to forums for airports for becoming Gazovis 21st patron if you'd like to become a patron or a donor for Gazovis all you need to do is um come to our patreon page this is it i'll leave the link to this page out of the description box at youtube we also link to this page at all of the pages at Gazovis you just come to this page you sign up with a patreon account and then you pledge an ongoing uh, monthly amount could be anything as little as one dollar a month, and uh, that's how you become a patron for Gazovids. A big thank you to all of our patrons uh, for Gazovids. Alternatively, you can just make a one off donation through PayPal if you would like to do that. This is Gazovids PayPal uh, dot me page. So, um, if you would rather not sign up to Patreon, you can use your PayPal account, which most people have uh, these days. You can use your PayPal, PayPal account to just um, give us a one-off donation and a big thank you to all of the donors and the patrons of Gaza. But you'll get a shout out in the videos. You'll get a thank you uh, if you become a patron or a donor. Gaza, if you want to, and some people have asked to remain anonymous, and that's absolutely fine uh, as well. But uh, a big thank you. Just let us know through um, through the uh, the um, sort of uh, message that you uh, leave with your paint if you'd rather stay anonymous. But a big thank you to all of the patrons and donors for Gazovis. It's helping us to pay for our website. We're primarily ads funded uh, and will be remaining. So this is just another sort of revenue stream. So a big thank you to everybody for doing that. Right, so again with the video then, and we'll have a look at the weather for next week to 10 days. These are the 500 bit of our height anomaly flow charts from the Penn State University. We've got the ECMWF on the top with the GFS. On the bottom, 500 millibars, 8,000 feet. This is an area in the atmosphere. High pressure, low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream running above. Uh, red and orange extrapolates to high pressure, blue to low pressure. So in the 7 to 10 day time frame, the ECMDF has this area of above average heights to the north and the northeast of the country with below average heights around Greenland. The flow on the jet, therefore... Uh, we'll be doing something uh, a little bit like that. So a lot of uh, fairly settled weather coming up with that, you would have thought. Although we have this cut-off low down to the south, um, which might threaten some heavy showers and thunderstorms. Now, what's going to happen over the next week, 10 days, is that we're going to go into a more showery period as we get through towards Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. There'll be some heavy showers, there'll be some thunderstorms, there might even be more persistent spells of rain. But beyond that, in around a week's time, we are seeing evidence of the Azores High beginning to re-establish, and this is what this particular chart is showing, I think, uh, the ridge beginning to build back up again as we go through to around a week's time. The reason that's happening is that although it will turn a little bit more showering 
in uh, the coming days. It's not a definitive breakdown. We're still keeping the main low pressure and we're still keeping the jet stream to the north and the west of the country uh, in that kind of position. It's a weakened jet stream anyway. It's very um, uh, sort of very weakened and broken uh, jet stream. But the main jet stream is still to our north in the 7 to 10 day time frame. And so although it will turn a little bit more showery and cooler in the week ahead. This is not, I've been explaining this in videos, this is not a definitive breakdown yet. This is the GFS and uh, it shows we have above average heights through the Central Atlantic and also to the northeast with below average heights around Greenland and Iceland and also to our south across uh, France. A flow of the jet then is doing something rather like that. So a little bit further southwards with the jet stream compared to the ECM. A little bit more unsettled, therefore. Um, but again, we're not talking about uh, a dramatically unsettled uh, period by any means. We're just talking about more showery for time and then possibly starting to uh, bring the Azores high back into play. But it's a very complex complicated and very subtle pattern this. Uh, so we're just going to take it day by day, I think, over the next few days to see exactly where the, this is going. Um, these are the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles. The next couple of weeks, we're looking at Daventry today, very close to me. The red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Daventry. We're starting off hot at the moment. going to be a hot weekend. Temperatures peaking tomorrow in London. We might peak at 32. That's 90 Fahrenheit. Most other places will peak in at upper 20s to around 30 Celsius. Uh, through to the early part of next week, so we find that temperatures cool down a little bit, go closer to average. And then we go into extended range, which takes us through the final week of July, and we find that the temperature ensembles are holding up above average. So quite uh, no sign of particularly cold. It cools down a bit at the end of the coming week, but then it starts to turn quite warm again from next weekend through to the final week of July. Precipitation-wise, so fair amount of dry weather for the rest of this weekend, but as we get through into next week, the rainfall spikes are increasing. So it does look as though there will be some useful rainfall coming up next week. But again, I have to keep emphasising this is not a definitive breakdown yet to the heat wave. Uh, means how the service temperatures are looking for damage trees. That's 30 degrees just there. That's 20 degrees just there. It's suggesting temperatures at the moment this weekend in the mid 20 Celsius. It actually will be hotter than that. We're talking about upper 20 Celsius for the Midlands. Early next week, a bit of a cool down uh, back closer to average at last through much of next week. But then as we get through into the final week of July, actually signs of a bit of a lift up in temperatures. We've got some ensemble members going up to 30 degrees Celsius. So chance, uh, a chance that things might turn really quite hot again before months end. Temperature anomalies look like that from the 14th to 22nd of July. Not as warm as they have been. So much closer to average, still a little bit above average for England and Wales, basically average for Scotland and Northern Ireland. Uh, and this is lower, these, uh, these temperature anomalies are lower compared to what we've had in uh, recent weeks. So it will be a bit cooler in the coming days, but still generally quite warm. Notice how warm to hot it is up over Scandinavia. It remains a very hot scene uh, up there across Northern Europe. Precipitation anomalies look like that. So again, close to average. Scotland is actually coming out a little bit drier than average. England and Wales generally coming out a little bit wetter than average. That's all down to the chance of heavy showers and thunderstorms from around Wednesday through to Friday. So let's have a look at the GFS men and this is how it's looking for uh, Tuesday. Now this will cover by weekend broadcast, so we'll rattle through this quite quickly. Uh, on Tuesday we find that we're going into kind of like a sunshine and showers situation. The showers should be quite light and scattered. Wednesday is interesting because there's an area of low pressure that's developing around there to the southwest of Ireland. This particular run of the GFS actually wants to move that in from the southwest from Wednesday to Thursday. And that brings more general areas of rain uh, for time through the middle part of next week into western and southwestern parts of the country. And by Friday, that low pressure is actually sitting across England and Wales. This, is, it, this was quite an unsettled GFS run with heavy showers, longer spells of rain and thunderstorms, especially focused 
on England and Wales. Scotland always a bit drier with this little bit of a ridge extending in uh, from the west. By the time you get through to Saturday, we start to take that low pressure away to our east, begin to build up the ridge from the Atlantic again. And so as we go beyond day 10, uh, beyond day 8, up towards day 10, we find the ridge from the Azores is building back in across the country. So that takes us to day 10 on this GFS run, which is Tuesday 24th of July, basically back under high pressure from the Azores. That's turning very warm again. Uh, next weekend and through to the final uh, full week of July. Uh, that's turning really very warm again, uh, possibly quite hot, quite dry for England and Wales, but a little bit more unsettled for Scotland and Northern Ireland. Just beyond day 10, we go to Wednesday the 25th, then Thursday the 26th of July, and we get a fungi breakdown coming along then. We have this area of low pressure deepening to the west of Ireland. And there's cooler air trying to come in from the Atlantic. And that's producing uh, quite a funky breakdown, I think, uh, just beyond uh, day 10. And then we go to the very extended range of this GFS run as far as we can go, which is Monday the 30th of July. And uh, it all looks rather slack and complicated um, once again. Overall, probably trending closer towards low pressure uh, by for, by uh, Monday, 30th of July. This is the ECMWF. Again, we find that uh, Tuesday is relatively showery. And as we go through to the second half of the week, we get this area of low pressure starting to come in uh, from the Atlantic. So this is Friday, the 20th of July. That looks fairly unsettled there would be outbreaks of rain moving in from the west but you'll notice it's rather different to what the gfs is showing at that time frame so anything from around wednesday onwards does need quite a big health warning particularly in terms of detail because there is so much uncertainty about the placement of these uh, shallow areas of low pressure and the main reason for that just to explain why that is the case. The main reason is that the jet stream still continues to be to our north. That's a little bit wrong. The jet stream still continues to be to our north, going up to uh, there. And a little bit of energy is coming down here. But the jet stream is still weakened. It's still broken. And so these areas of low pressure just meandering around, just meandering from the Atlantic into the UK, bringing showers or more persistent areas of rain, but not being pushed through definitively by uh, the jet stream, as they would if we had got a proper uh, jet stream coming across the Atlantic. So the exact placement of these little shallow areas of low pressure is what's causing all of the problems. That Saturday 21st of July, a week away, finds that area of low pressure almost over the top of the country, so that will be bringing showers along as well as rain. But just beyond that, we saw it on the high to normally flow charts, we start to build the Azores high back. And th again, that's happening because we're not truly bringing the jet stream down across the country, and we're not truly breaking down the high pressure. So as soon as those low pressures, those shallow troughs begin to move away, we uh, allow the Azores high to begin to build its ridge uh, yet again. And this is a common factor that you see in the hottest and driest summer. So even when it does start to turn a little bit more changeable, it's only a partial breakdown. And then you'll get yourself back to high pressure uh, very quickly. And that's exactly what's going on here. So by day 10, again, we've got this ridge building through the country. And we've broadly in the pack we've been in since uh, May, to be honest. We've got the ridge from the Atlantic building through the UK. And and it's going up to Scandinavia as well. The jet stream, therefore, is up there. The main jet stream, uh, which is weakened, is up there. So this is a large sort of ridge of high pressure that's dominating uh, over thousands of miles from the Atlantic up to uh, Scandinavia. If we could go out a bit beyond that, we would probably find this low pressure in the Atlantic coming back in uh, with its westerlies and probably a fungi breakdown, similar to what the GFS is showing. And then finally, for these charts, we've got the GM. So all rather showery on Tuesday through to Wednesday. Uh, and then different again with this solution, because as early as Friday, we're starting to build the ridge in from the uh, Azores. And as we go through to next weekend, high pressure is more or less in control. It's not overly hot, though, because the air coming around that high pressure is coming from a northwest direction. So that's a little bit cooler, uh, but it's still mainly dry, actually, by next weekend. Or it's gone back to being mainly dry and a lot of fine weather. 
And then that's how we look at day 10 with high pressure well and truly uh, in control of weather pattern. In fact, I'm not sure the GM really has uh, even a partial breakdown uh, there in the coming week. So that would be a much drier solution compared to the GFS and the ECM. There would be uh, very few uh, showers or thunderstorms coming through uh, with that. So it's all a little bit of a mystery, to be honest, what's going on in the next few days. But I think we'll have a bit of a partial breakdown from Wednesday to Friday. I think there will be showers and thunderstorms. Um, but how widespread they are remains to be seen. But then going back into the high pressure conditions quite quickly. Five-day accumulated precipitation from the GFS looks like that. So a lot of dry weather in the next five days. But the 10-day precipitation uh, accumulation precipitation looks like that. And it is turning wetter. So we find that particularly for a, for a sway from southwest England through Wales into Midlands and northern England, quite wet there uh, with uh, up to sort of 40 to 60 millimetres meters predicted in um, that area and in fact down in the far south and southeast there is more rainfall being predicted than we've had since April so we may get some very useful rainfall in the next 10 days that is based on the uh, six o'clock run of the GFS, the run I just talking you through, and the weekend forecast was based on that as well. The only caveat I'd add with that is that we've seen from the ECM, which also is quite unsettled actually from Wednesday to Friday, um, but it's in a different position with below pressure, if you see what I mean. Uh, and then the GM isn't really going for any sort of breakdown at all. So the only caveat I'd add is that there is still a lot of uncertainty about just how much precipitation there's going to be next week. Temperatures hold up quite well, whatever happens. It's just how much precipitation we manage to generate in the day's head. It's probably when we get through to the middle and later stage of the coming week, it will probably be a case of now casting to see just how much uh, rainfall manages to get going. But even with this useful rainfall that might be coming up this week, I think the signs are there that by, that by day 10, we're probably back to the Azores high and we're probably back to dry and pretty hot weather too. Uh, so let's just wait and see how much rainfall we manage to get next week. Obviously, many of us are now crying out for some decent rainfall. It would be very nice to catch some uh, heavy showers and storms. I think most of us would agree on that in the days ahead. So let's just see how much we manage to uh, generate in the coming week. Right, so that's brought you up to date there. I think we've done the weekend forecast. We've had a look at the next week's 10 days and beyond. So that's it for today's video updates. Tomorrow, we'll have some autumn analogues. And uh, we'll also have the guys of this Sunday roundup as well. So come back for the updates tomorrow. But that's all for now. And thanks for watching.